अठारह यही कंज्यूमर हेल्पलाइन Take a very close look at the pictures coming up on your screen. Blood flows with abandon. Animal bones are lying strewn around. Carcasses are piling up in the hundreds. But this is not a slaughterhouse. It's a factory in Agra where ghee is being made. Yes, you heard that right. The same ghee that you use to make your food. You may think it's the exiler of good health. But our story tonight might get you to change your mind. A headlines today national investigation reveals that almost 25% of the ghee being sold in the market is adulterated. This is not just unbranded ghee which is sold in the open market. Adulterers have found innovative ways of pushing this poisonous ghee into packs of big companies as well which are later sold in big shops in all the major cities across the country fat from dead animals animal bones and several toxic chemicals that is what goes into the making of your ghee but that's not all now take a look at the pictures that are coming up on your screen chemicals are being injected into these vegetables to make them grow faster make them bigger and look more colorful look also very carefully at where these vegetables are being grown in most cities of the country vegetables are being grown usage using sewage water and these are the vegetables that you and i pick up from the vegetable market the water used is so unhealthy that each one of us is being poisoned every day as we consume these venomous veggies this is a headlines today exclusive your food is poison Good evening and welcome. You're watching Center Stage. I'm Rahul Kamal. Two weeks ago, headlines today broke the news of a national milk adulteration racket. We showed you how synthetic milk is being manufactured across the country. The recipe used to manufacture milk was ghastly, to say the least. Here's how the milk was being made: a few liters of water added to which is white paint. Yes, the same white paint that we all use to paint our walls. Add some urea and mix it well. That's not all. then comes the detergent yes the one that you use to wash clothes well if you don't have detergent shampoo works almost as well last but not the least add some refined oil and the white poison is ready to be served tonight on center stage we bring you the second part of this headlines today special investigation your food is poisoned is an essential medium of cooking in almost all indian homes its very name evokes the thought of food that smells heavenly and tastes even better but our expose tonight will make you think twice before you add that dollop of ghee to your meal that dollop contains bloody parts of dead animals like cows buffaloes and camels do not take our word for it watch it for yourself this is a headlines today special investigation for death that will numb your senses fat from dead animals being used to make ghee not in some corner this is a flourishing industry of adulterated ghee and this is the story of poison ghee what you see here are smuggled out of body parts of dead animals from slaughter houses animals like cows buffaloes and camels These body parts are boiled in huge pans till the time the flesh separates from the bones. When these bones become tender, they are cut into small pieces and then dried. These sun-dried bones are then grounded into a fine powder and poison ghee makers call this powder tallow. But that's not all. What you see hanging here is animal fat from these same dead animals. After they are dry their fat is melted in huge pans. The bone dust or tallow is melted fat and then sent to spurious ghee making units. Check the tooth 
देखो माल पकता है उसमें कपड़े धोने वाला सोडा नहीं होगा पानी में डाल के पकाते हैं वो भी वाइट होता है लेकिन इसमें क्या है They are mixed with refined palm oil. The bone dust gives the fake ghee its granular feel, and the melted fat gives the required viscosity. Essence is added to manage the foul smell of this mixture. They also add a few ounces per kilo of real ghee, just for the effect. This mixture is then heated again so that all the components mix properly. Poison ghee is now ready for packaging and spurious ghee makers are also experts in counterfeiting big brand names. Some of their packages look quite similar to popular brands in the market. They even forge the Agmark sign with perfection. 99% of these causes of these things are because of the adulteration. I think we'll have to deal with it very firmly. The law needs to be firmed up. The institutions will have to be firmed up to, with regard to the labs, and the prosecution system should be improved. The ghee that you eat every day with your chapati, the ghee that your mother puts in all vegetables she cooks, the ghee that enters your system through almost all homemade sweets, this very desi ghee is anything but desi. It's dangerously poisoned. We have the proof, and now it's on the government to take action before food becomes the next big killer in this country. With Bureau Inputs, Tablin Singh in Delhi for headlines today. What we showed you just now might be shocking, but it is not an isolated problem. Uh, in towns like Meerut, Nagra and several others, contaminated poisonous ghee is made and then it is transported to all four corners of our country. Experts say that no less than 25% or one quarter of all ghee consumed by us is adulterated. That makes it a whopping 1,000 crore rupee industry. Almost 25% of the ghee in the Indian market is spurious. At least 250 units across India make fake ghee. The adulterated ghee business generates a whopping 1,200 crore rupees annually. Agra and Meerut are the two big centers when it comes to making fake ghee. It's made from the fat and bones of dead animals. The cost of making one liter of spurious ghee from dead animals is 40 rupees. This finally gets sold to the consumer at over 220 rupees, which makes it an extremely profitable business with huge margins. Headlines today caught one of these fake ghee sellers on hidden camera. The business of fake ghee making is supported by a huge network. From Meerut and Agra, the raw materials reach fake ghee making units spread across India. The main centers of making spurious ghee from palm oil and animal parts are Kanpur, Hapur, Gwalior, Bhind, Muraina, Vidisha and Indore. From Bhind, Murana and Gwalia, this fake ghee reaches Delhi and its neighboring areas. From Kanpur, it reaches Bihar and Kolkata. From Indore, it reaches Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh. Animal fats and bones are used as constituents in soap, but to use them in products meant for internal consumption is a criminal offense. However, this is happening on a large scale across India. Without strong laws to prevent these adulterators, they will continue to serve poison on your platter. With Bureau Inputs, this is Kanahiya Sharma in Delhi for Headlines Today. First it was milk and now it is ghee. Why is the government not doing enough to clamp down on food contamination? That's our big focus tonight. Uh, joining us we have Priya Hingorani. She's a lawyer in the Supreme Court. We have Dr. M. Wali. He's a senior consultant at the Department of Medicine in RML Hospital. We also have Shiram Khanna, managing trustee of Consumer Voice. And in, with me in the studio is Deepak Sharma. He's our invest, uh, editor of investigations for headlines today. Deepak, I'll start with you. You've got a lot of stuff uh, that you've been using as part of this expose. Your investigation team has been working on this for the last several weeks. Take our viewers through how we went about doing it and how difficult was it for you to get to the people who are contaminating Aghi. You see, most of the samples what we are lying here on the studio, they're all adulterated. 
And the story Rahul started 15 days back when our team had launched the team. They got a tip off that Desi ghee, which is priced at 225 per kg, is being sold at a throwaway prices like 150, 160. We located few shops, few dairies on the outskirts of Delhi in Loni. One dairy was Durga Dairy, and the man who was operating had gone to Tihar Jail, got a bail after two months, and again he was selling. These are the samples we purchased at the rate of 120 per kg. It sells in the market for 225. Yeah, we got it 120. You, you can know the percentage of discount then. Okay, but take our viewers through how dangerous this is, how this is made, and how do we know whether we are buying the right ghee or not? I think uh, uh, let's talk of this first sample which we bought for 120 from Durga Dairy. We took this sample to Shriram Institute for Industrial. Uh, you can see this report. Mm -hmm. It's from Shriram Institute. We were suspicious that this contains uh, animal fat, but the laboratory test, after the laboratory test, it uh, was uh, found that no animal fat is here. So we were surprised, we were dodged that how is selling at 120. We went for another test at another certified lab and then we found after the test was conducted that in this particular desi ghee, uh, palm oil has been mixed. Palm oil and some essence and some chemical. It's more dangerous. But it smells well, it tastes well. All right, let me just bring in, uh, we've, we also have Subodh Khan Sahai, the Minister for Food Processing. He'll be joining us tonight. We'll ask him why the government isn't doing enough. But Sriram Khanna has been studying the subject for several years. Uh, Mr. Khanna, your sense on whether the government is actually doing enough. We showed what happened with milk across the country. The government immediately ordered an investigation. Certain dairies were raided. But the fact is, this is happening on a large scale. We're seeing bones animal fat that is what goes into the making of ghee and for a lot of vegetarians amongst our viewers this is this is blasphemy listen there's a saying history repeats itself exactly this time of the year 25 years ago there was a scandal called the beef tallow scandal all over india jan shuddh vanaspati was a company that imported container loads of beef tallow and sold it as ghee and a scandal broke out. Not one person went to jail. And let me assure you, your story or no story, nobody is going to go to jail for doing what they are doing. Because our food laws are ineffective. Our food laws do not have the capacity to deter adulterators. They make money and they go get away by paying fines. Okay. okay. Priya Hingorani, can you take our viewers through the food laws and why they are so ineffective in being able to prevent this and why is it that people commit such adulteration and are able to get away with it? Yes, uh, see according to the food laws, the laws which are in place are uh, fairly uh, okay according to me in a sense that the sentence, the penalties are in place but it is the implementation, the actual prosecution which does not take place where the conviction rate is absolutely low. The food uh, uh, inspectors are found taking a uh, bribe and they do not actually give the true report. The prosecutors don't uh, give the report in a proper manner. They do not take it to this logical end. There is delay in the courts because of the fact that uh, the courts are overburdened. So that is why it is, there is, it is not a deterrent. Okay. okay, I want to bring in at this time Subodh Khan Sahai, the Minister for Food Processing Industry, why is it that our laws are such weak laws? Why do they lack teeth and why are we unable, sir, to clamp down on food, food adulteration? The today's law is not teethless, but more teeth is there. Even a wrapper is being snatched, then you are supposed to go to the jail. But for every piece, it's not very much practical. But as I said, the contradictory there. Some is saying that you can, you have to put the only sugar in this. If somebody wants to put cycrin, he can't do. Sir, so so much contradiction is there. I have seen this law of the different different ministry. So I want to bring to your notice what happened in China. There was a major adulterated milk racket that came to light in China recently. Within months, all the adulterators were sentenced to death. That is how stringent uh, action was taken in China. 
why are our laws allowing people to get away? Deepak Sharma just mentioned someone whom they bought fake, uh, fake ghee from who was actually in Tihar jail for a couple of months. He paid a fine, he came out and he's doing the same business once again. You know, death is uh, the India's and we are not for much death. So, but they are pun punishable economically. This culprit do what for? To earn money. Make them ec economically bankrupt. Make them punishable for the life imprisonment and all. So, there is a provision in the new law, everything, that they should feel that they can't run away. But China thinks is a different, there is a law of their, their own country, they believe in that, we don't believe. I want to bring in at this time Sriram Khanna, he's got very strong opinions on the new law that you're coming out with Mr. Khanna. Uh, the minister seems to believe that the new law will be effective in dealing with adulteration. Is that a view you share sir? This is the new law, it was published in 2006 August, an honorable minister himself is responsible for having the draft prepared and he also wanted to take control of this law but fortunately Prime Minister gave that law for implementation to the Ministry of Health he was probably working with a good idea that we will liberalize food production he is the Minister of Food Processing not the Minister of Health and in his, in his zeal to promote the food processing industry and being motivated and lobbied by the industry he made the law so liberal that today we have to have animal bones served in our ghee in our kitchens. It is because of the door he has opened. Why trying to help the organized industry? He has opened, the, given the signal to the adulterators. Do adulteration, sell adulterated food, make crores. You will be caught. You pay a few thousand rupee fine, and you can live happily ever after. This is the minister who is responsible for the adulterated ghee synthetic milk being sold in the country today he is not able to protect uh, protect consumers okay 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 let me let me just bring in uh, mr sahai on this what is the government really doing to be able to prevent adulteration what i find most appalling is that our reporters are able to get to this adulteration racket with relative ease what is it that the government is doing and why is it that you are unable uh, to unearth such rackets almost one fourth of the ghee being sold in this country is adulterated and your government is doing nothing about it so far my ministry is concerned this is year we are observing as a quality a standard year of 2007-8 and we are going more and more but again I will say we are not enforcer the state is a enforcement agency and the state must act against adulteration if they will allow to run away these rascals I think then any law will be useless you know no matter which minister it is, last time we had the Minister of State for Health and he said the same thing that the states are to blame, do not blame us. Priya Hingorani as a lawyer of the Supreme Court, how much, how much credence do you give this theory that all central ministers have, been, have really been giving us that don't blame us, it's a state problem because these guys are playing the blame game and all of us are suffering on account of that. You're right. Uh, the thing is, it is the, it is the law which is, the law has to be made by the center. The law is made by the central government. If the law is made with good, uh, with uh, the penalty clause and the laws have got good uh, uh, ways to catch them, then it is, it is of course the states which have to implement them. But according to me, the law in its own self is not strong enough. This is particularly the new act which is coming in in 2006, the Act of uh, Food and Safety Act, is not strong enough, does not have strong teeth. Uh, the penalty clause is of just only 5,000 rupees, the punishment is only of three. And the main problem is the fast tracking of these cases. The, there is a provision in the law to have summary trial. But how many cases actually go for summary trial? It is very, uh, the law is made by the government, right? But the law has to be implemented in its proper sense, in the proper spirit. And that only the states can do. So according to me, there are three things which 
even if the state has to do it is one ensure that the uh, the uh, summary trial cases take place the uh, the prosecution have puts the case strongly and the punishment the conviction rate goes up in these cases only that can be a deterrent and nothing else now there is a one very pertinent question because minister is sitting with us and what mr karna has said the most shocking part of this story is that despite the nhrc raids in meerut at the slaughterhouse we struck a deal with the biggest beef tallow supplier and that is on camera after even the raids he has promised and assured us that he will supply 4 to 5 ton of tallow per month and after even showing it on screen he is still absconding he is not being caught so despite the nhrc guideline despite the raid he is on camera and he is saying that i'll give you Four to five tons of yellow tallow, white tallow, per month. All right. That is the state of that law. That really shows how alarming the situation is. People, even if they get caught, are not worried because they know they can spend very little time in jail, pay a small penalty, come out, and then go about poisoning each one of us. And that surely is something Mr. Sahib will realize cannot be allowed to go on. We're heading into a break, but we're not done with our investigation yet. When we come back, we'll show you how your vegetables are actually being made. They're not coming out fresh and natural. They're being made with the use of chemicals and injections. We'll talk about that and also the medical side effects when we come back. Stay with us. Back in a moment. Welcome back to Center Stage. Next time the vegetables at your vegetable vendor look to be too fresh to be true. Remember, you could be buying adulterated greens. Can you imagine injecting poisonous chemicals into vegetables to make them bigger and heavier or cleaning vegetables in sewer water? Believe it or not, there are people out there who are doing just that. This is the third part of a headlines today special investigation. vegetables being injected with chemicals to make them grow faster that's poison in your vegetables and that's not all vegetables soaked in a poisonous mix of copper sulfate to make them look fresher for longer this is the same copper sulfate which is used as an insecticide not just that extremely powerful chemicals like calcium carbide malathion and calcium chloride are also used all this to make your vegetables look farm fresh these pictures on your television screen are of healthy looking fresh vegetables hand picked from a lush green farm these vegetables may look fresh but they're actually a form of slow death neurotoxic affecting your nerves again they can damage your kidneys they can damage your liver and all your major end organs and gradually over a period of time the uh, functioning of these organs will get affected and gradually your uh, there will be loss of the function of the particular organ these fresh looking vegetables could actually become the cause of your death because these vegetables are not naturally fresh it affects children children may are more prone to have deposition of these uh, metals into their growing bones so they their growth might be affected they might be having suffered they might suffer from short stature problem and it affects bone marrow also because bone marrow is the factory of blood it produces blood for you and that gets affected and people tend to become anemic there's a huge money making network in place to keep the vegetables artificially fresh the entire process involves the use of some deadly chemicals researchers in the university of rajasthan have also found that farmers use dirty sewage water to irrigate their crops and because of this the quantity of harmful chemicals in vegetables like spinach and cauliflower shoots up the figures during a test conducted were startling the quantity of lead was found to be 63.1 mg per kg something which is generally supposed to be 10 mg per kg the quantity of cadmium was 6.7 mg per kilo and this is supposed to be not more than 0.2 mg the quantity of deadly chromium was 53 mg as opposed to the natural 10 mg so next time you buy vegetables be careful you may be consuming a deadly cocktail of harmful chemicals with tablin singh and kamaljit sandhu in delhi channi for headlines today
Well, I'm feeling a bit queasy after having seen how our vegetables are made. But what I want to know from you, Deepak, is how widespread is this? And is there any way anybody might know whether you're buying a vegetable that's been uh, grown properly or one that's been made using sewage water? What is startling and what is more shocking, Rahul, is that uh, when our team went to the Azadpur Mandi, which is the biggest hub of vegetables, which is the biggest mandi, the biggest market, even these type of vegetables you find there, only the price is throwaway price. But even in Delhi, the national capital, these vegetables are available. And again, we have that on camera. Okay. Let me bring in at this time Dr. Wali. He's a senior consultant uh, with the Department of Medicine at the Ram Manohar Loya Hospital. Dr. Wali, how, how harmful are these vegetables? If people are consuming them, how much damage can they do to our body parts? Well, for a long time, people are seeing the damages done to their brain, nerves, kidneys, liver, gastrointestinal tract, and today we have been talking about the marrow suppression. But let me tell you, this is a very small amount of these toxic substances which go to the body. But my intention at the point of time is people are knowing more about these adulterations and these abnormal vegetables not suitable for consumption but how to get away from them how to buy the better stuff we have been telling people to smell the ghee taste the ghee test it in the lab if you can buy a better brand similarly for vegetable we have no brand so buy a average looking sized vegetable not too much green i call this makeup of the vegetable they do the makeup of the vegetables, so don't buy more beautiful looking this interesting point, Dr. Yes. Wali, uh, Deepak in fact has a bottle with him yeah, yeah. which has some essence in it. Dr. Wali says smell the, veg smell the vegetable or smell the ghee yeah, and you'll be able to tell whether or not he has uh, it's contaminated. essence which is called butter flavor. Okay, just, just wait till Deepak actually shows you what's in his bottle. I think this is the secret, the secret of the adulterated in, uh, industry as far as ghee is concerned and butter is concerned. One drop in, of this bottle, one drop of concentrate of this bottle, Rahul makes 20 kg of ghee. And this bottle is being available in market and this is the bottle for which these people who are making poisonous ghee are looking for. No, but Dr. Wali says you smell it, you can tell the yeah, difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but can you, if you put that essence in it, can someone who's buying it off the market tell whether he's buying real ghee or not? You just smell it yourself. Okay. Just smell it yourself. Okay, Deepak has said that if you open this, it's going Don't to open, just you. smell it like that. Okay, it smells of ghee. Yeah. There's no question about that. Yeah. So, Dr. Wali, on that point, you know, if you have if you have essences like this, which really the whole point of this essence, and Deepak says it's a much treasured commodity in the adulteration market, the whole point of the essence is to fool people. Then how does a common person uh, tell whether or not he's buying real ghee? It isn't quite as simple as you make it out to be, we, sir. We have told in one of your programs recently that if you have a small child and five, six months year old, you put that ghee into his mouth, the child swallows, or child licks if it is desi ghee. If the child vomits or throws it away, it's, it's spurious. We have also shown the hydrochloric acid test. Then we know from our childhood the taste and flavor of butter and ghee. If it doesn't taste like this, fourth is consistency. If too much granular, it is not the natural one. Fifth is that if it is too much thick, and it gets thicker on keeping in the cold, it is likely to be spurious or adulterated. These are the issues which we have to check. Apart from this, in the uh, vegetables, we have to see for their size, their color, and their texture. Uh, more large looking vegetables and more darker looking, more greener uh, looking vegetables could be colored artificially. And I've been telling people to boil them, wash them properly. First, wash them uncut, then boil them once, and then take out the second water after boiling them. Don't fear for the vitamin loss, so called vitamin loss you have the fiber and you have the food value so if this is happening we have to save ourselves we have to get our body protected against the harmful medications like oxytocin cadmium zinc nickel lead whatever is going with these vegetables and causing the epidemic of kidney disease and causing the liver problems and neuropathy and whatnot
Okay. Okay. Uh, but Sridham Khanna, in all the experience that you have in dealing with this issue, uh, can a normal person, when he goes out to buy either vegetables or he actually tell whether he's getting the real thing or not, whether it's contaminated or not? You see, our experience is 90% of the people cannot make out because they don't have the kind of knowledge and experience which Dr. Wali has. And if they were, you know, trained to do that, perhaps, you know, maybe 5 or 10% people will do that. But now look at this situation. In the year of our republic, huh, so many years after independence, the citizen of India has to learn how to make out adulteration on his own while the government budgets have been invested in public analyst laboratories in every state. Every state, including the city of Delhi, have laboratories whose job is to get samples from the market and test them and find out where adulteration is. What the hell are these labs doing? When, why, why are we being told to do it ourselves? Is the government not going to protect us? You make? In fact, the person on your screen right now, his name is Dilshad and he is a person uh, the police of several states is looking out for. He's the one who supplies contaminated ghee uh, to Delhi and several other cities. And Deepak tells us that despite an NHRC notice that he be arrested, he's still out on the out on the loose and he's offering your reporters that he'll sell them, uh, he'll sell them ta tallow in large quantities. Rahul, if had suppose if he has been on run, then okay, fine. But the, the thing is that he's still operating from his office in Meerut and he has assured us that if you give this number amount of money, I'll give you five tons of ghee, uh, of five tons of tello every month. And that is despite the police race, that is despite the NHRC rates. He's still operating. That is the most shocking part. And that really shows in a way, Shridam Khanna, how serious or non-serious the government is in, in, in really tackling this issue. Because it's a slow death, because there is no immediate side effect of this, the government just, for example, this person whom you just saw on your screen, he's actually out in the loose, there's a lookout notice for him, Deepak says he's operating from his office, and the government is doing precisely nothing about it. Mr. Khanna? Yes, you know, I'd like to say, you know, I'll recall, you know, I mentioned about the beef tallow scandal 25 years ago. Today, the same thing is happening. History is repeating itself. Nobody went to jail then. Uh, let me guarantee, nobody will go to jail now. Another example, five years ago in the, in the national capital region, 55 people got killed because of mustard oil poisoning, argemone poisoning. Not one person has been convicted to today. The government is working under pressure of food producers who want liberalization. Mr. Subodh Kansai is their leader, heading the food and processing industry. And by liberalizing these laws, in order to promote the industry, you have opened the door for people like who are on the screen, who are going to make so much money and become millionaires, pay a few thousand rupees fines and live happily ever after. This is something which cannot be allowed to go on. It can't be so simple that you go into jail for a couple of weeks, pay just about a thousand rupees. That's what you said the fine One was. One more point I want to add, very important point. During our investigation, we came to know that a task force was made which collected samples from Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan. 250 companies, 250 companies manufacturing uh, this adulterated ghee, they were found, the samples were tested. These companies, 250 companies in Madhya Pradesh, UP and some other states, no action has been taken against these 250 companies till now, till date. Yes, yeah, surely the government has to do something. You can't just pay a fine of a couple of thousand rupees, get out and get on with life as if nothing changed. Well. Uh, if you're a vegetarian like many others in the country, dal chawal would be a staple diet for you. Uh, but we have some really bad news. Your favorite arhar dal is not as safe as it used to be. Adulterators are mixing it with toxic variants of that which look exactly the same. This is a Headlines Today special investigation. Be careful the next time you stock up on your pulses. You could be stocking up poison. Yes, the same pulses, dal, that you insist your children eat for protein, are actually being poisoned. From coloured stone and pebbles to the hazardous kesri dal, adulterated pulses are being sold in the market. Not one or two kilograms, but 3,000 quintals of adulterated arhar dal were recovered in Bundelkhand last week. 
This may look like regular Arhar dal to you, but it contains Kesri dal, a cheap and low quality pulse that was banned by the government in 1961. It was used to feed cattle, but its side effects were found to be so dangerous that even that was banned. Headlines today uncovered this place in Ghazipur, Uttar Pradesh, where Kesri dal is being added to Arhar dal. The pulse is contaminated with such precision that you will not be able to spot the difference. ये खेसारी और मटर को पालिश करके मशीनों द्वारा पालिश करके उसको अच्छा बना देते हैं जैसे लगता है देखने में कि हर की दाल है और वो उसको मतलब हर की दाल में अपना मिलाकर जिसमें 75 परसेंट ये मटर और ये रहता है और 25 परसेंट हर की दाल रहती है जो मंडी में आकर ही सब बिकती है Three thousand quintals of contaminated arhar dal were seized from this godown in Hamipur. This too was contaminated with Kesri dal. The godown is in the Bundelkhand region, the largest producer of pulses in the country. From here, pulses are distributed all across North India. And if this had not been caught, poisonous pulses would have landed in your kitchen as well. If you're wondering why arhar dal is mostly contaminated with Kesri dal, here's why. Pure arhar dal costs 60 rupees per kilogram. Kesri dal, on the other hand, is really cheap. It also looks similar to arhar dal, and so contamination is easy. Not just Kesri dal, pulses are also being polished with dubious oils and colors so that they look shiny and fresh. Sometimes pulses are coated with powder so that their weight increases. So efforts are being made to make it look shiny so that you have absolutely no hope of being able to tell the real thing uh, from the contaminated one. But Priya Hingorani, what can be done now? We're seeing the central government pass the blame on the state government. The state government saying we're doing what we can. We can do no more than this. What can really happen to ensure that contamination which is happening in such a rampant manner across the country is brought down? See, according to me, the law which has been made by the central government has diluted the earlier law which was in existence. This Food and Safety Act has diluted. Now, earlier the onus was on the manufacturer or the supplier or the seller to prove that he has not uh, been, there has been no adulteration. But now it is now on the poor uh, consumer who has to prove that he has not fallen ill because of this or he had fallen ill because of this. So. According to me, this law really needs a, a relook, and uh, its stringent uh, provisions must be brought into it, and there should be uh, punishment up to life imprisonment. As far as the central government is concerned, I think this law, which is being brought out from 2006, needs a uh, relook into it. Right. As far is as that something that we have agreement on, Dr. Wali? What's your view on this? Uh, the government saying that we are not China, we can't go out and hang people. That might be true. But do you believe there's a case of making our laws far more stringent instead of watering them down? Well, I cannot comment on this in any case, but we have to make ourselves very much aware of what we are eating, what's happening around, which you are doing. But let me tell you, I give an example of the tallow. Tallow is being used in leather industry, in polish industry, in making some other items where we require tallow. But if people will start mixing it with the edible ghee, where do we go? Where are we going? So we have to do our own introspection, society's own introspection, and we have to learn what to eat, what not to eat in the given day. You see, giving punishment is not ending the problem at all. We have to learn how to recognize the good food, how to eat the proper food, how to wash away the toxic material, what could be in like somebody is making a vegetable green. You, you cannot catch him because he has made it green miles and miles away from the place where it is being sold and you are buying from. So you can do, you are helpless, you can just wash it. If a person is mixing a, a color in the almond uh, seed, almond, almond seed, then it is geru, what is called a red colored powder and soaking it into the water, soaking it into water is to increase the weight, it's not adulteration, it's not, I mean things are done in such a clever way, Kesari dal is polished in such a clever way that you cannot spot it, the other dals are being 
uh, adulterated in such a way you cannot spot it. So we are in a very, 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 very deep dilemma and we have to know how to fight it out. Okay, okay. that's something that I think there is agreement on. Uh, we might not be China, but we need to take stringent action against those who are caught so as to ensure that others get a very strong message that they cannot get away by poisoning us through our food. For the moment, Deepak Sharma and to your team, congratulations for having put this together. All we hope for really is that the government acts on this. Last time we put out the story about milk, there were raids across the city. In several cities, in fact, the health minister in Delhi said uh, she will go personally. That really did happen, but that needs to be sustained. It cannot be something that happens just for a couple of days and then everything is forgotten because these people, as Deepak pointed out, go into jail for a couple of days, they pay a small One, fine, they come out. I just want to interrupt you. There were 250 companies were making such type of poison ghee. When we made a random checking, one company was Swag, which was making ghee. When we cross-checked the address, the address given on the, on, the, on the label, we found a construction company was running in Sagar, a construction. So how a construction company can make, make ghee? So absolutely. It's a strange country. It's not just about making the list. It's not just about saying the right things as Subodh Khan Sahai did on the I show tonight, add, what we need. About, it's also about buying protection. Huge amounts of money is paid as bribe, as regular haftas, for to the people whose job is to stop it. And their job is to stop it, they take money, they look the other way. And the consumer is... Now all the states have to be made more accountable. And they have to, according to me, the accountability of the ministers, the accountability of the state government has to increase and they have to be more transparent in the way they are going about uh, looking and work, ensuring that the implementation of the act is done. Sure. Sure. They can't wish away or wash away the problem because it's in that sewage water that our vegetables are being grown and that really is the problem. For the moment, we thank all our guests for joining us. We're heading into a break. When we come back, we'll talk about the Al-Qaeda threat. They're saying they're now gunning for Pakistan's nuclear arsenal. How credible is the threat? How safe are Pak's nukes? We'll talk about that when we come back. Stay with us back in a moment.